Welcome back, everybody. It's the Bleacher Boys Media Podcast. Hey, guys. Quick little disclaimer here about the episode. A lot of the talk in the beginning is about Yamamoto, and unfortunately, we recorded this a day before he actually signed. Um, I think a lot of the points are still valid, and there's definitely a lot of interesting detail throughout the episode, um, but just a little something to keep in mind. Um, thank you, guys, and enjoy. Newly called, I don't know, what are we calling now? The Spice the spice Mix, the Spice Boys, whatever we're calling it, here we are. We're here to talk some baseball. It's been a couple weeks. We've seen some things happen. We've seen some deals get made, and some deals are still yet to be made. We're going to talk about some of the biggest names still on the market and how the deals that have been made are reshaping the baseball world right now. First, I'd like to check in with you guys and see how you're doing. Ken, what is new in your world? Uh, what's new in everyone's world is that the year is almost over. I saw a thing on Twitter today. 97% of 2023 is complete, and uh, we have 3% to go. And I don't know what you guys do towards the end of the year, but uh, I'm planning to go home tomorrow, see some old friends, see some family. It'll be nice. Um, a good reset. What? I'm seeing you. I'm seeing your ass tomorrow. Oh, wow. I just, just so we're aware, that's not an, a, I'm, not I'm an official plan yet. That was kind of just haphazardly thrown around as a plan. But, you know, I like it. Um, it's as it's as official as Yamamoto the Yeah, eights. Great well, segue. Okay. Um, uh, I just want to say, mm. before we get into it, Ali, I think we got to clear the whole Spice Boys thing with the lawyers first. I don't know how uh, that's going to go with the Spice that's Girls. True. I don't know if there's any, you know... Uh, you know, legalese that we need to, you know, do on that front. It's true. There are five of them and only three of us. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you know, the numbers just don't add up. Um, I had one more thing. Oh, it was about the name of the podcast. Wait, I already said that. Long day. Ollie. <laughs> oh, <Zach. laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay. This is why I'm not hosting okay, today, guys, so we're, as you can probably tell. We're bouncing around a bit. It has been a long day for Isaac. He has been in the process of redefining U.S. tax law all day, and for that we salute him. <laughs> but it's been taking a while. I've been learning some Japanese phrases recently, oh God. mostly used with Ken. This is a careful subject we should approach. Ken, I want to tell you, desune hansomu, desune kokoi, and also in this room, I have to say. I know what he's trying to say. I have to say, koko wa samui this, koko wa samui this. We're in this shirt. But um, also, I have had some cookies earlier, but still, onaka suita, onaka suita. Wow. <laughs> oh, onaka he's suita. Can he's you give a little learning. translation, Ken, All right. what he's talking about? I have one more thing I want to say. So when I go to Japan and Ken and I do a trip together, I'm going to have some phrases that I'm going to use when I talk to Japanese girls. This is the oh one boy. I'm going to use. This could get, this um, could get bad. Hajimashite? Uh, America chinto tsuki aitai? <laughs> do do you want to do you want to date an American boy? Is what all you said. Wow. Hello, I mean, you nice know, to meet you for the first time. Uh, honestly, yeah. his pronunciation like ain't bad. Like, and this is I've obviously you know been to Japan. It's there. I've been to Japan. I've heard the you know the, the people veteran. speak. Yeah, you, some could say I'm a veteran. And I, I, I honestly, he has a better accent. You you heard people speak. Okay. Isaac has heard the people speak. Dude, I've heard the people. Japan, heard the I've people. heard the it's people. It's not like you've been to my house. Oh before, right, right, right. You know? Yeah, I yeah right that too. But I mean, Ali's accent. I mean, I, if we're rating it, it's pretty up there. I maybe give him a seven. I gotta say, Isaac, of the two of you, you're the one I think I really want approval on in the accent. I mean, of the two of you guys, there's Wait, one guy who get, knows Japanese accent. Can we get a phrase accent. out of Isaac? It's no, Isaac. Yeah. Let's get a phrase I, I, out of Isaac, please. I, all I have is a suimasen, but it's not like it's not really polished. But I know how. I know. You know what it is? I know. Um. Uh. uh oh my God. What was what? You know what it's supposed to sound what, like? What? What? Oh, intonation. Who said that to me? Our, our good friend on the baseball team. Oh, uh, beer guy. And uh, this might come off as racy, so I don't want, want to say how he said it. I mean, we're, I mean, we're okay. kind of already deep into this. But he just said that, like, I don't understand, like, Japanese per se, but I understand intonation. Or as he said, it, intonation. So, you know, like, it, it, it's, it's it, part of any language is... Follow the yeah, rules. exactly. Right? Part of any language is understanding hand gestures and intonation and stuff like that. But anyway, this is not the linguistics pod, um... And, you know, I think this is a good segue for Yamamoto. Um, obviously, a lot of, lot of rumors recently. Um, Mets, I think, are out. Yankees are in. Dodgers are in. Um, I don't know. I, th I think Yamamoto's a Yankee. I think, it's, I think it's pretty official. Today we had Aaron Boone say that they gave Yamamoto a number, what was it, 18 jersey. And he said, oh, it's his to take or leave. Like, dude, that is such a... 
evil empire, big baller, Yankees moving on. I'm sorry, I know this is like the, the normal baseball um, channel, not the Yankees channel, but I just love that stuff. Like that, Nothing gets me going like that. Um, and then Alex Verdugo coming out, saying some stuff about the Red Sox. Like, ugh, I, I, I forget how much I miss baseball uh, around this time of the year. And, you know, yeah. Very well said. Um, I like to swing it to Ollie, I guess, because the Red Sox had a meeting with Yamamoto. Let's not forget. Uh, the Phillies had a meeting with Yamamoto. Let's not forget Bryce Harper FaceTime call. Ooh, what do they talk uh, about? What are they talking about with the Red Sox? Like, do they understand each other? I don't know. The atmosphere is crazy. Let's ring the bell. You gotta do you go, think he understands know. ring the bell? That presentation he got going. I'm sure he has a translator at every one of these meetings. That so, what do you think? Like a face be much necessary for okay, but what do you think? Like a FaceTime call with Bryce Harper with a translator. Like Bryce Harper's like, like he's like, yeah, you gotta come to Philly. It's electric here. And then he goes huh, electric. And then he like looks over and starts translating like to him. And then he goes, oh, but Harper's just sitting there on the phone. Like I think that could be a very awkward conversation. You know, that's why Hideki Matsui might, might be Isaac might be. That's on. why Hideki Matsui is big for us. Sent him a video message. He understands that. Doesn't need a translator. Yeah. Uh, Red Sox chances of acquiring Yamamoto. Give me, give me something, Ali. Do you have hope? I know you like the pitcher. I know you want him. Minimal, minimal, minimal hope. Oh, minimal hope. Oh. Even with the new, even with the new helmsman at the wheel of this ship that is the Boston Red Sox, this foundering <laughs> ship, I might say. Is low. The odds are still very low. Is the game just which? Japanese player is doing, is doing the best job of selling Yamamoto on his team? Is it just, is it Otani, Senga, or Yoshida? I mean, that's what people keep saying, because the Giants seem to be out on Yamamoto at this point. That's the report I've heard. But if it comes down to those three teams, I think the Red Sox have the worst shot, and the Yankees are still very much in it. Um, Yamamoto is going to require at least 150 plus, <laughs> I would think. I think we're very plus. far past that. Yeah, at least, and I just don't see the Red Sox putting on that kind of money. On uh, your boy, I'd love to see him on our team. I'd love to see him on our team. His pitch mix is so unique. He throws that special thumb-first curveball thing that we've been looking at as that crazy splitter, and he would do really well in Fenway Park, but the odds are very low. Um, what would you put the percentages at? Me and Isaac did a little fun off-the-side um, game where we put percentages on each team, and we obviously had the Yankees pretty high, Dodgers pretty high. It was almost 60-40 between those two. What would you put that at? 6%. 6 Red Sox? And, and where did, six and where did you get that number from? Just pulled that out of nice. my head. You know, 6 is a good percent. I, I'm very comfortable with that as a Yankee fan. You, you know, one thing I just can't get over, and I keep hearing this on, on all the talk shows and stuff, is that right now the, the I, I would put my all my savings on the fact that this is over 300 mil deal or around 300 mil, which is, if you think about it, kind of crazy because with the posting fee that's going to be another 50 so that contract is going to be bigger than Garrett Cole's contract for a guy who's never thrown an MLB pitch before is like slightly crazy but I'm all for it like as a Yankee fan like I'm so, I, I and I, I think uh, Hal Steinbrenner's sick of this too is like oh you guys don't spend money like I'm, I'm so down for them to go for it but like I can see a world in which this is an awful signing like giving that much money to a guy that you really don't know anything about. Like, sure, his splitter, his his repertoire is great. He has a great splitter. You don't know what that splitter looks like with a bigger baseball with fatter seams. So, like, I mean, on, on a fundamental level, it is a scary signing, and obviously, I, it doesn't deter me at all. But it's really something to consider. And I think this is what all the losers of the you know free agent are going to say. Like when Dodgers are sitting there. Uh, you know, not after maybe not getting him, they're going to be saying, well, we didn't know. We, we couldn't give 300 mil to a guy like that. Red Sox, how can we give 300 mil to a guy who's never pitched in MLB before? And I think that's a I big think, loser argument. I don't know because I kind of disagree because in this day and age, with the amount of data and analytics we have, these Japanese stadiums are are set up and, you know, rigged up with the same technology as MLB stadiums. And Yankee scouts were there... For all his starts, I don't but it's know a different ball. Be, but all of his starts, the so analytics don't matter. It's a different ball, but we, it does matter. Oh, it does matter because we're not talking about a tennis ball and a golf ball. This is two baseballs that are slightly different in dimension. He pitched a WBC ball, which is an MLB ball. He was completely fine, and in recent years, I don't think there's been one like highly touted Japanese pitcher or any foreign yeah, yeah. pitcher. Who has flopped? But he's also. And I you mean, look at Tanaka, Darvish, Otani. Maeda was solid. These guys have 
been what they've been advertised as. For like, what Senga it's worth, was advertised as a two, and he's been a two. For what yeah. it's worth, didn't you spend all summer playing baseball with a different kind of ball, Isaac? I think both of you did. Was it impossible? Ali, I'm not a I'm professional not athlete. That. I know this is a big shocker to you. I'm not a professional athlete. Yeah, but a professional athlete probably would have even much better odds of you to figure well, out this here, new here, ball. Just to play devil's about, advocate so. here, I think it's like if his splitter has, okay, let's say he is, I have no idea what the RPMs are, 3,000 RPMs on his curveball, right? So if, if the seams in the Japanese baseball are, like, I don't know, smaller, what, what do the, are those RPMs change? And slight, you said, like, slight difference, right? Slight differences do have big changes on RPM. So I'm just playing devil's advocate why wouldn't, here. Like why they, wouldn't Darvish or Otani or Tanaka have had the same problem? Well, I don't know. I mean, also, the other thing is Thank that you. the other thing is that he is much smaller they than did. those guys. So, like, hand size is much smaller. I'm just trying to think outside the box. Here, guys, he is a smaller individual than all of them, so that that is you are thinking outside. That the is box. a factor. I think no, like your your fundamental argument of giving three hundred million plus to a guy who's never thrown a movie pitch, it sounds ridiculous. But if you like really dive in and see what this is all about, I don't think it's as crazy as people initially might think. Um, but I want to ask Isaac. He brought up a Garrett Cole. I don't want to go too far into the Yankee stuff. But do, do you think it matters? At all to Garrett Cole, if he if Yamamoto, who's never thrown an MLB pitch, is making more money than him. Next Absolutely year. not. I but think Garrett Cole anything? wants to win. I think Garrett Cole is a true born American hero winner. As Ali would, I, I I try to sound like Ali sometimes, and it just doesn't come out as nice because I wasn't an. It does not come out. As I nice. wasn't an English major, so it just you know I try though, but I I don't know. Although both his parents were. This is correct. This is true. Um, but I I, I it's, it's in there. Somewhere. I don't think. Very deep, very deep. <laughs> very recessed, uh, if that's a word. Um, uh, I don't think Garrett Cole cares at all. I think Garrett Cole wants to win. I think you have a Japanese star who's 25 years old coming over who's supposed to be, you know, uh, it can be an ace. I mean, I think Garrett Cole would welcome that. And, I, okay, I don't really want to get into the Yankees stuff, but Carlos Rodon, too, if he's anything like he, you know, if anything like he is, Yankees have a potential of, like, three ace-level pitchers if they get Yamamoto, so... I mean, like like I said, I, I don't really want to talk about the Yankee stuff anymore. Um, but it's just a lot of a lot of things to consider. Well, speaking of contracts and players of Asian descent, what are your guys' thoughts on Young Ho Lee to the Giants on, the, on that big contract? Ollie? Giants need a star. We were talking about it in our earlier episodes on free agency on trading. Giants need a thump in the middle of the lineup. I don't think it's enough. And... I would still search for a big chip in a trade. I think they could still make that trade we proposed in our video, Mike the Trout. <laughs> Mike Trout option. That's what I would have gone for. But uh, I think the contract is fair, and it's enough for the fan base that they make that move. I don't know how many people in San Francisco are huge on Jung Ho Lee and will buy tickets for the next season because of that signing, but I think it will make a big difference in the lineup. I'd like to make an announcement real quick that... Um... Yeah. From our previous video where we were predicting free agent signings, I don't know if you guys even realized, but Isaac nailed Jung Hoo Lee to the Giants. Although the money was very far off, he guessed four for forty. He signed for over a hundred mil, but who cares? Isaac got the team right, and for some reason, for a, for a little update in this game, Isaac is again in the lead um, on top of on top of the charts once again, putting up points, putting up. Uh, Free agent predictions left and right as if he knows the script. So. Well, I mean, I just figured that the Giants wouldn't get any actual superstar and that they would then have to overpay for a guy who, you know, we're not too sure about. Like, it just it just, it just feels right. Like, also, like, you know, a West Coast type thing. I – you didn't – I didn't really give your thoughts on the trade, but I, I, don't, I don't know. This, this one scares me because I know the Japanese league is pretty comparable, but I, I honestly have no idea what the Korean league – um, is like like that that th this is a, a lot of money to give to someone who I mean actually I the one thing I do know is that the Korea, K Korean league is most certainly inferior to the Japanese and MLB and the ja and the Japanese league is still like you know one tier lower so it's like are we like are we really gonna give this much money to to a guy who we're even more not sure about and you know y Yamamoto's case and I think Yamamoto's a totally different story but it's it's easier to get these hitters out, right? Like with, with the stuff that he has, like when 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 a batter doesn't see a pitcher for a long time or never sees him, it's you know the the, the matchup favors the, the the pitcher every time. But for a guy to expect it to be like hitting the top of the order, like 
this could go very, very, very bad for the Giants. So, I don't know. This one scares me. I agree. Um, this is riskier than than the Yamamoto thing, uh, for sure. But I, I can't help but root for the guy. I don't know if you guys saw the press conference, yeah. but this guy was trying his best at English. He's asking the reporters if he looked handsome in his new hat, and I'm all for this guy now. Like I, I'm rooting for this guy. I hope he does well. It does scare me that he's not a big, um, big uh, high exit velo, high launch angle guy. He's not. A hit, he's not gonna hit too many home runs, but he can probably sting some in the gaps in, uh, in not AT and T, uh, Oracle, and uh, I, I'm hoping for the best. But we'll see. That's a lot of money for a guy. That KBO, like they haven't, they have, they haven't had too many. Great hitters come come over to the MLB. Hassan Kim, it took him two years, three years to fully fully develop, but he's still like right above league average at like one ten OPS plus. So we'll we'll see what he does, but I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, yeah. I saw a thing that was about how the KBO is like a quadruple A or triple A kind of, you know, in numbers wise league. So that's just kind of scary. But the Giants were just like, someone please take yeah. our money. No one wants. To, I don't know why no one wants to go to San Francisco. Is it the ballpark? Like they just don't want it. It's not. A, it's not. It's a very pitcher friendly ballpark. Like what is it, Ali? You got anything? It's a beautiful stadium. It is a gorgeous stadium. It is a pitcher's friendly ballpark, but not by much. It grades out at like ninety seven, ninety eight on that one hundred baseline. Look at this. He has it off the top of his head. Pitcher's scale. Like Leader boys, is great. <laughs> We've seen a lot of pitchers have tremendous success. At Oracle Park in recent Matt years, Kane. your Bum Garners, your Zitos, Matt Kane, of course, great Guys name. Are in. What yeah, a go, a man! Full, Did not think he swing. knew who Matt Kane was. Little preview of the segment later. Uh, Logan <laughs> Webb. But also, you've seen hitters go off in Oracle Park. Barry Bonds, most famously, Jeff Kent, and Posey, and Pence, and Studs over the years. So, I don't know if it's something organizationally that might be turning players off. Maybe the management has gotten a bad reputation. Obviously, I would never have wanted to play for Gabe Kapler. You guys know I'm vehemently anti-Gabe Kapler, but he's no longer there, so that's not a reason to not go there. That maybe was reason for guys a couple of years ago. I'm going to San Francisco in three days, so I'm going to oh. take a thorough look around the city and see if I can figure out why these stars are uh, are shying yeah, away. Yeah, do some interviews on the street. Do you guys see the comments of... There was a comment made by Buster Posey about how stars are shying away from San yeah, Francisco. Yeah, about, about really? the city. The, the that? city. But is that really a reason? Can you read yeah. that to us? I mean, play, players came to – I mean, this is a bad comparison. But when, when New York was, you know, very dangerous and the 90s players came to came there, like I, I – There's a huge drug epidemic going on in San Francisco There's right a, now. Does that there's have a drug epidemic around the whole country. Like, what? Like, I, I don't know. No, but San Francisco – especially bad. Like, the footage coming out of San Francisco is like cr- there's like zombies just like literally walking. Whoa, around. okay. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I mean, look it up. It's scary. It's yeah, scary. No, I'm, um, San Francisco is known for some crazy. Yeah, shit. I know, but like, but Who if knows? if like okay, but you're making hundred fifty exactly. million. You're exactly. Not going near and you're, that. You're playing in a beautiful stadium, and also this is the team that's won. What, what do they win? Like three championships in the last like two decades? Like, come on. Like, what are we like? San Francisco is a seems like an awesome place to play. Like, especially in that stadium. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It seems weird. One damn look, near 110 look, uh, games uh, a couple uh, years ago. You know, you guys are not You guys are both making good points, but to the Posey article that Ken mentioned, the thing is we have to remember is players don't just go to cities on their own. Baseball players get married very young. They start families very, very young. It's a conservative kind of game. So anytime you go to a new city, you're bringing your wife and all your kids along. And that's a huge reason to be like, I want to be in a city that's, you know... If you make $150 million, dollars, you can afford to move into the city, the, the next city over. But it still makes a difference. Okay. And uh, can I just say, Ali, today you are reminding me so much of Ken Rosenthal. I just like... The, I, I, I was going to say, you're, except he's for the bow tie. You're literally like, the way you're talking about baseball just make like... Flashbacks to Ken Rose, Rosenthal. So, and wow, I can't even say that. I don't, name. I don't putting know. on a different character once we once we gave him the reins to the show becoming. The yeah, host I, I think it's something to do with the no, well put together. in not... camera shot this time for the first time in Bleacher Boys Media history. <laughs> I think it has everything to do with this mid angle shot. The high angle shots, the low angle shots weren't working, but this one I feel very. And it's crazy, like the, your good, mic good. level is at a normal level, like like an actual podcast. So it's it's you know. He hasn't cut out yet. This is incredible. Well, don't jinx it. Whereas Isaac is still too loud. Knock on wood. Well, I'm, you know, I'm just a loud person in general. So, <laughs> anyway, um, 
transition here. So, so obviously, I think the whole MLB or or this free agency is moving so goddamn slow uh, because of two Japanese stars. Sorry, Ken. But what what are we what are we doing here? Like, wh- when when are we going to see some some of the other guys get traded? Like Cody Bellinger, uh, Blake Snell. Um, Matt Chapman, like a lot of these guys, like they're high value guys, like a lot of teams, like these are big pieces on, on a lot of teams. And it seems now that I think the value for Bellinger is just tanked. And I I really think he's going to go back to the Cubs now, but I don't know. What do you guys think about the next line of free agents? I don't know if you forgot that Erod went to the fucking Arizona Diamondbacks, making them a, another contender, but no, for real though. Blake Snell, if you were Blake Snell right now, and you're waiting on a guy who hasn't thrown an MLB pitch, and you just won the fucking Cy Young in the National League with a low 2 oh, ZRA, your second Cy Young, and you're just sitting there waiting for a guy who hasn't fuming. even pitched, fuming. thrown a single pitch. I mean, Dude is that must be pretty nuts. But he probably has a good payday coming from probably the Boston Red Sox. Um, I could see that happening. Um, or your Monty just had a great postseason run, and you're just still sitting there until January. I know these guys want to know where they go, where they're playing next year, you know, because they got to get a house, they got to rent, they got to buy, they got to do other things in life, you know. So they're not just baseball players. So I don't know, like what's next? I I I guess that the pitchers go next after Yamamoto because that's usually the line of business. And the guys who are still waiting, hitters wise, I just as Isaac said, I just think they don't have a market right now. Like there's nothing holding those guys up. I think I think Bellinger and Snell are like the same caliber player. Like you have. They're high value, but you have no idea what you're really getting from them. Like I could, I could for both of them, I could, I could see Cody Bellinger batting 170 next year and getting injured, and same thing with Blake Snell. Like I could, both of those players are so similar to me in terms of like they're so inconsistent, and they have that like they both have like the highest honor, like he, Cody Bellinger MVP, uh, Blake Snell uh, Cy Young. But I could see like why teams don't want them as well at the same time, which is just such a a, a, a crazy thing to say about two guys that have that kind of past. You know, there are some things in this free agency, free agent market that are baffling to me and they've been baffling for years. And I'm going to, I'm going to preface this discussion with a question for you guys. I wonder if either of you can name to me the current all time American league, national league leader in ERA plus ERA plus Dude. Isaac is a stat that measures the pitcher's ERA against <laughs> A MLB baseline against a value of 100, so we're 100 is the yeah. average. Can you name to me the all-time leader among starting pitchers, AL, NL, all-time leader in ERA plus? Well, it makes Who is it that? makes me time, think like, you're yes. Since 1903, it makes, me think, it makes me think you're talking about Blake Snell. It's definitely not <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we're on the topic, so I don't know if you're changing topics or not. Or okay, I'm talking about a different pitcher. Okay, now. is this? Play, can I get a couple hints? No, this should be easy. Garrett Cole? Nope. Is it wait? Is it a player after 2010? Bob Gibson. Yes, guys. Context clues. Justin Verlander. Kershaw. It's Clayton Kershaw. Okay. Still the all-time leader at age 36 on opening day. All-time leader in ERA plus at 157. Why is he unsigned year after year? Why do people I can not answer, answer that. themselves? Like, I can answer that. And don't say injuries. Playoffs. Don't say injuries. Don't say <laughs> I'm injuries. I'm not saying injury. <laughs> don't say injuries. Don't say playoffs. Don't say either of those. those I, I won't say either of those. Teacher, teacher. What's the third me? reason? What is it, Ken? It's it, it's up to Ker- Kershaw. Doesn't want to sign. It's all on him, dude. He's making the calls. You are telling me at, Kershaw of all people doesn't want to keep pitching and winning? That's nonsense. He's he's not sure, and he knows he's like a Brett what Gardner. He, he knows the contra- one year contract will be there at the end of the year, and he just wants to chill out. He knows the Dodgers will be there with a one year contract, because there's no other reason why at 34 when he started signing these one year deals, I'm sure if he went to the Dodgers and said five year deal right now or I'm going to the Rangers, you don't think the Dodgers would have given him that? Yeah, it's, why does he not? It's Kershaw. Yeah, give him the five. Like, why would he not ask for a five year deal to chill out the rest of his career in L. A. Because he might just want to call it quits next year. He's probably not sure. He gets hurt every year. He gets rocked every year in the playoffs. Oh, you said the, you said the playoffs. Everything he can you get. You said the playoffs. Oh, the playoffs. Said the playoffs. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, he broke his rule. And he said, and he, said he gets hurt. You yeah. said both of them, actually. Kershaw, you said both of them. Kershaw, <laughs> Kershaw has got everything he wants out of a baseball career. How do you know he, that? There's nothing more he needs to do. No. What else does he, need to do? he has to get 300 wins, dude. Pitch seven more years, get 300 wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Become yeah, an icon, yeah, yeah. first ballot Hall really of Famer. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. 
Oh, he's already he's he already of those. But he has to be like he's even a World more Series that. champ. Unanimous. He wants a unanimous. That's why I think he keeps playing one one year. Do you think there's? Do you think when he you realistically deal. goes anywhere else other than the Dodgers? Uh, no. Well, well, I don't know, zero, man. zero. The Rangers. If the it's Rangers the sign him, they're the Stop, most Stop. idiotic Stop. team of all time. Like there's the, <laughs> the drum, yeah. Scherzer, Kershaw. They may, they may as well literally. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was gonna say they may as well get like Lance Lynn as well. Any other old pitchers you guys can think of? Lance Martin Perez, Martin, Martin Perez, Perez. Andy Pettit, sign okay. Andy Pettit, get him out there. <laughs> yeah, how's he doing? He'll come back from retirement for a third He's time. Not the shoulder get injured first first pitch. Pay him forty million dollars. Just on the Eduardo Rodriguez about... note, real quick, real quick, real quick. You mentioned that okay. going to the Diamondbacks. That's so amusing to me. That's so funny because Eddie and I've known him for a long time because he pitched on the Sox. You said he was unpredictable. I him so much. He is so unpredictable, and I think. A lot of pitchers are nuts. Most pitchers are crazy. But Eddie is, like, quietly nuts. Like, in the old days, you know, they're used to these interviews with the Sox players, and they would talk about, like, which player had which characteristic, and they, they would ask them, like, oh, yeah, so which player on the team is, like, most likely to take you out for dinner and then, like, not pay the bill? Like, who's most likely to just not pay for anything, not pay his meals, not pay his bill? It was Eddie. Okay. I think the dude is nuts. And <laughs> let's just say, like, this is an unpredictable kind of... This is a this is a capricious kind of dude, and the second signing in a row, he's gone to a failing like low market team. Well, that's failing, good, failing. Like, the Tigers, but like with a small like a small better market than team. both of our teams. He's gone combined. to a small market team. Okay, say that like, twice Don't say in a row. But then also, also remember in the middle of the Tigers failing. project, he just our diving back followers. Dude, 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 he just gave up pitching for a year. Remember that he just gave up pitching for a whole year in 2022 yeah. when he was with the Tigers. He didn't wanna like the dude. No, it doesn't mean like apologize people on don't do that. Of, uh, Bleacher Voice Media to <laughs> what? Will you get over that? Just <laughs> failing, agree with me. Tough. I he can't misspoke. get over the fact he misspoke. that you said failing he for a he World misspoke. Series team. He misspoke. Okay. He misspoke. <laughs> and I also want to confirm one thing. Are you guys what? on Ollie Eddie like Ollie Eddie terms? I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, first not, name like, basis was kind of crazy there. Eddie? Eddie? No, no, nickname Eddie. Eddie, that's my boy. I was raised watching all of his starts. Of course, I can call him Eddie. South Freeland type level. You have to call him. You have to call him Senor Rodriguez, actually. That's what you can okay. call him. Sal Freelick level of homies. Okay, buddy. Sal Freelick and I basically grew up like together this. in the same. So uh, if you know like if you know this Eddie so well, what's his career war? I'll give oh you a range God. of point five. <laughs> point, it, that's your it? range. Your range is point yeah, five. Yeah, point five like, plus or I minus point five. Are you kidding me? All right, all right. Okay, war? here we go. He should be able to name. So it's low. So it's low. So it's low. I think he's boys. He grew up with him, like Eddie. Can I guess Ollie. first? Just random. Yes. Six, he's calculating. Six, six, yeah, Sixteen. Yeah. All right. Let's wait for all these. Fifteen. All these Fifteen. Answer to 16, come in. I, I think his career war is around sixteen point five. Oh. Whew. You want to change, Isaac? No, I, I, I'm not just a random guess. I know nothing about him. You're sticking at 16. About him. It's 17.6. Wow. Oh, 1.1 1. 1 off. All right. That's a pretty good guess. 1. I know 1. my boy. I know my boy. I know my boy. That's pretty good guess. Pretty good guess. I can name which year he had the highest war. That for sure. That was 2019. Well, that's pr- well, I can are, name that. There Isaac are no points that. for that. Nope. Isaac didn't know who Size Rodriguez six. was before 2019. That's not true. <laughs> that's AL East, right? True. Right. That's yeah, right. right. Good job, buddy. Are we going to talk about Heimer Candelario to the yeah. Reds or what? Heimer Candelario, dude. What a guy. Because that's confusing me. He was carrying my fantasy team for a while there. The Reds Why have so much talent. Why are the Reds talent. interested in Candelario? They have so much infield talent. Uh, well, it might not be about where he plays. It might be. Remember how we were talking about trades earlier? We talked about doing that like trade where Santander went to the or Reds. India's Maybe gone. they watched the video. Yeah. <laughs> I think they, yeah, they probably watched the video and want like a solid veteran bat to help mentor all those young studs they have. Um, how much money so did they give? So he's probably playing what first? How much money did he get again? He went for three years, forty-five mil. Fifteen. I nailed mil that for, on the head. Button. Fifteen mil for Heimer. Wow. Good for him, dude. So what? To play first base, but Votto's gone. Or what? I think probably mostly. Is he Votto's replacement? Either that or he's going to be a DH. He's not like playing short or third. I'll tell you that. 
No, no. Well, be Morte not. and Ellie. Uh, that might be the most electric left side of the infield. He might be. D- it's Fifteen mil for a DH seems like a lot, though. No, see, that's why it's confusing. Yeah. It's Isaac, confusing. Isaac, you want to chip in here? I got nothing. What, what I got nothing. I have no clue. I mean, honestly, they're probably doing what Bleach Sports Media said to do. Um, and if you guys haven't checked out that video, it's it's a shame because on this channel, I'm sorry, change the subject. On this channel, we we have such inconsistencies. Like we have some videos that do so well, and on like stuff that content that we don't even like like that much. And then there's some that we feel that we do such a <laughs> good job. <laughs> what is he Just talking about? We do such a good job. Yes, and- Isaac has a tendency to knock things <laughs> that he's supposed to. <laughs> Dylan sees he's ass. <laughs> Our content, yeah, it's sometimes ass, but you know. No, but listen, hang on, hang on. And then this other content that we really like, like the video we did on, um, you know, like uh, proposing a trade and like, you know, we don't get any views on that. So guys, go check that out if you haven't. It's it's a really interesting, funny video that is like so underappreciated on this channel. So go check that out. I think it's the last one we uploaded, if, if not. Is it not? Ken, is it? It's I not the last one is. we recorded, though. We did a 25 and under draft, which can we be, did. We you did. know, it's, it's on a rollout, <laughs> rollout schedule. schedule. So I mean, that's a video that can go out at any time. And how's our live ABs at Yankee exactly. Stadium going? Oh, Ty's Ty's got it. Ty's our Ty's Ty, our editor. For those who don't know, <laughs> Ty's been our longtime editor. He's been working on one video for, <laughs> for two years. Tenure here at Bleacher when it Boys drops, Media. it's gonna be like Sundance Film <laughs> Festival. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> they're gonna be. They're, it's gonna win all the awards. Oscar Nick the Chula. And yeah, three years. <laughs> It's a great video. You guys should. You know what I feel really bad for is the people in that video. Look forward to that. The people who were like, <laughs> "Yeah, those poor kids." Dude, we got for comments. Years. Like, we were getting comments on our videos. Like, I was the guy that got a knock off your boy. Are you serious? Video. No I mean, way. You're no, joking. I'm dead serious. There on Instagram. On Instagram. No, no, no. On, on a YouTube I mean, Ken, video. Now that we have was jobs, we can afford to pay Ty to actually just do it. We've paid Ty before. We I don't paid think him. That's Ken, 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 Ken. We paid him twenty bucks in a can of Zins. 20 bucks each is like, that's pretty good. I Dude, he works shit. for like, like a like, week on it. Like, you got paid. No, we, Ken, we paid 20 bucks in a pack. Of no, sins. he did not work for a week on that. Well, he said he did. Like 40 bucks. <laughs> that's because he's lazy as fuck. No, Ty, Ty needs to get Ty, it. Ty, Two Ty year did. job. I feel like we're straying off topic somewhat. You, you think so? This is a productive conversation though. Yeah. All right, then I'll, I'll, can I get us back for, with a, yes. with a quick trivia question? Please. Yes. Isaac Isaac gets first guess. It, once Isaac gets a guess wrong, then Ollie Damn. gets thrown into Damn. the mix. My question is, um, there are two uh, captains in the MLB right now. Name the other besides Aaron Judge. Oh, boy. Well, Mike Trout's got to be one. No, wrong. Ollie, you're what thrown in. The, what are the Angels doing? <sighs> There's only two captains in MLB right now. Aaron Judge is one. How is it not Trout? Did we just talk about him? No. His name hasn't been brought up on maybe a single Bleacher Boys with you have, so. Let me know if you guys... Salvador Perez. Fantastic. But I think you guys... Sh- Fantastic. Oh! Oh! Bang! Isaac! <laughs> is that right? <laughs> is that right? Booyaka oh, yeah. Booyaka you that? No you, way. Let me just take you through the process. Can you tell me your thought process? Well, let me just <laughs> take you through the big brain process. Out of nowhere. Well, I was just thinking about, like, teams that we would never talk about. <laughs> and I went yeah, from, no like, some of like, okay. the Pirates. I'm like, there's no one on there that's been there forever. I was thinking Andrew McCutcheon for a second, but then I, psh, that thought gone. And then I just thought of, like, a guy who's a leader. <laughs> and the, when I first thought of leader, I thought of Sally Press. So that's a little, little swish there. A little, a little jelly fam. Well, Jelly Fam? <laughs> okay. All right. Cut, cut. <laughs> um, and I think that transitions us into my next question for Ollie, which is the Royals are active. One of the most active oh, teams in this offseason. And I, I personally love the moves they've been making. There's these two, three year deals for veterans that can lead a clubhouse, lead a team to that next tier up th- uh, for a rebuilding team. They got young stars already in place, ready to go. Melendez, Bobby Witt. They got their guys. Do you think this is it's possible that they're a playoff team next year or like dude, what's dude. their what's their like timeline here? Because I these, do love their moves. These under the radar moves are so clean. They are spotless. It's Thank the you. cleanest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean going down the list, one, Seth Lugo, clean. Michael Waka, so clean. Hunter Renfro, that is just 
untouchable, man. And they got Will Smith somehow. Use more clean references. How much money did they give Will makes- Smith? It would just spotless, just absolutely Mr. Clean. disinfected, honestly. Disinfected. Incredibly yeah. disinfected. These movies are disinfected. Like Dirty. They are free, completely, <laughs> completely no, uh, unstained. Just a Windex I mean, move. An absolute Windex of a move. Windex move. An absolute Fabuloso. Sh- you you could say, someone say are. Fabuloso. Michael Waka, criminally underrated. <laughs> he was underrated in 2022, underrated yep. last season yep. as well. He could be the ace of their staff next season. Pairs very well with those young studs, your uh, hey, singers. Don't forget about my boy Brady Singer. Oh yeah, about your your singers, Top your picture, uh, Cole Reagans, your Carlos Hernandez's. Um, and you gotta love seeing Hunter Renfro, my boy, also criminally underrated. You mean Mike Trout? The cornerstone of that lineup. I think you mean Mike Trout. Yeah, they are definitely. They were switched at birth for sure. Those are twins switched at birth. Hunter Renfro gets undervalued wherever he goes. I don't know why. I don't know if it's his personality. He seems like a sweetheart. He gets undervalued for his power and his average and his amazing outfield skills. He's a tremendous arm and center. Yes, dude. Have you seen? He's not that fast. He's a great guy down at third base. He has a cannon of an arm. Everything else is. He's not rangy. In that dude, in that huge outfield at Kauffman Stadium, is going to come in clutch. Really good signing. That being said, the Royals are still uh, terrible, and I think they will continue to not be very good or successful for several years really? until larger organizational I, things start to develop. Yes, they have a talented Bobby Witt. I was going to yes, say, they have a sneaky MJ MVP. Melendez. Like, sneaky top five MVP. And s- sneaky, like, I see the Royals next year as how me and Isaac saw the Cubs of this year. I think no, they're really? all, I the, that seems like a I little bit premature. Ra- oh, premature! I buddy. think they're in the range of 83, 84 wins next year, pushing, don't knocking on that me. door. Wait, they don't have. Don't coming. speak for me. They, they, they don't have a Dan. No, I said how me and Isaac saw Cubs. They don't have a Dansby or a Bellinger level talent. I I would say Bobby Witt team. is at uh, Dansby level, if not more. Bobby Witt, Vinny Pasquantino is a thirty homer. Bob Kyle no pitching, is the, no bro, pitching. These guys are super, That's super underrated. Brady Singer, Waka. Waka? They're getting pitching. Waka. Will Smith always makes it to the World Series. Waka. There are Isaac, still... You are underrating Waka. Waka. You don't know Waka. Ooh. That's a little disrespectful. He went 14-4 and four with a 3-2-2. Two, two. Like, that's better He's than... He's underrating Waka, but... Rotation be uh, Kenzo, there are still a lot of holes in that Ooh. lineup, man. I respect your faith. But there are a lot of holes in that lineup, and dude. And a lot of holes in the Guardians, uh, Guardians div- team. A lot of holes in... Dude. That division. Tigers up are also for up next, s- but we'll get to that next. Up for it. Up for it, that division. Well, the Twins are the twins are going to look solid next year again. So it's not totally up for it. They've lost a couple pieces here and there. So do you think the Tigers they are got, not they improving do got at all? Their, you like, think Detroit is not improving at all? You think Detroit's they're just static? Super, they're the, I think Detroit is like the new Baltimore. I'm high on these AL Central teams. Okay, so you can't, be, Indian, you can't be high on every team. I can be high on two teams. You're high on... Th- Four teams right now. It sounds like because the only we we all agree the White Sox are going to be the dumpster for White the next Sox century. White Sox are trash. Uh, Guardians are trash. Guardians are not. And I think you just waffled on the Guardians. You just switched your opinion on them. Well, once Bieber, no, 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 gone, no, no. I was Bieber's trying to explain guys. that Bieber's gone. They're they're trying to trade Naylor Bieber. They're they're always going to be medium mediocre. Eh, eh, it, eh. Can, they're, they're, it's I'm just because the Yankees are their daddies. That's why that's why you have this perception of them. No, just look at look at their record for the last five years. They're always mediocre. And They're Tito's mediocre gone, Steven in division that in. thrives I'm out. mediocrity. I'm out. They pull pitching I'm out. Going of, out the they pull pitching out of the. They're, the Guardians are never a last place team. They're never a. Their division team. sucks. They're a third <laughs> place team for sure. <laughs> because never the White a last Sox. place team. White Sox are gonna be a last place. I have the Guardians in fourth. I have the Twins in first place. And then Royals and Tigers are second. You know who's and third. Like a, dude, if the Royals if the Royals pull off a winning season next year, then I will admit that you know baseball. No, make a bet. Make a bet. Put some money where your mouth is. Money's we'll not see significant. where the offseason after the money, offseason. I, I will put okay, money on my. Okay. I'll put, I'll put my Money's money. not as significant as the cred. The honor is worth so much more than the money. The honor of me and me, that Ken knows baseball better than but me. But you wouldn't say it for real. At this point, you wouldn't say it for real unless you put some money on it. December 21st, 2023, do you think, who do you have higher, Royals or Tigers? Say it one more time. December 27th? <laughs> Shut up. December 21st, today, today's oh, okay. date, yeah, yeah, yeah. at this point in the offseason, who do you have higher, Royals or Tigers? Mm. Dude, Tigers still. 
Sorry. Sorry. Fair enough. I fair think enough. the Javi Baez move. All right, a couple more moves I think away. the Javi Baez contract is one of the worst contracts of all time. I think not a hot take. I mean. yeah, that's, yeah, fair, fair enough. I yeah. think they, well, I think there. they ruined just presenting this as if it's like no, the <laughs> no, 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 shocking. I, I just shocking think that they had take. so much young talent, like in the farm, like so much young pitching farm system. Like, I, I just didn't make any sense to like me. Who, like who, like who, uh, like the Manning. Wait, like who? Uh, they still do. Uh, what's his name? Um, He's um, got this roster right so from much. Him right they now. Have so much. Look at him typing. Look at him typing. Give me them names. No, they have um. Oh my god! I know the guys. I know Manning. the guys. Lefty, know. lefty, lefty. Funny name. Righty too. Righty too. Also righty. I I, I, know I, I know the guys. I I know the. I'm not good with names. We know this, guys. You know that they have. Okay. That's, that's I know. Fair. I know the guys. I know. So, Casey Mize, right? Casey Mize and Terry Scoob and Reese Olsen Terry are not offended. I know. I know. No, no, no. I, I, I was just putting you. I was just okay. Thank, thank you, thank you. Um, I just think that it's just a weird decision for like an for like an up and coming team. Like if you're gonna get a veteran, Javi Baez doesn't strike me as like the strong leadership veteran type guy. So it's like okay, if you want to pay. 150 mil for a veteran to guide your young players just like that doesn't seem like the guy you know that, that's just that's my only qualm with it i know obviously like he sucks numbers wise too but that, it's it's more about like when you're paying a guy that much money you you want some leadership there and i feel like Baez is not really that type of dude right i think it made a lot of sense three years ago it doesn't make sense now but it made a lot of sense three years ago to why because three years ago he was a different player than he is now three years ago he had Still had his power swing. He could still hit for average theoretically, and he was a better defensive player. And those things have kind of fallen Hot off take, the rail. I, th- I mean, I think it's still in him. Why? You think it's still there? Why? He's only thirty. He's, there. He's only thirty. Because every time a big big stage comes up for him, a- AK uh, Puerto Rico games for the AK. WBC, he's just on fire playing. Also known, <laughs> AKA Puerto Rico game, also known as when he plays in the WBC. Uh, he's a different player. You can just tell so naked eye. You can tell Tigers have to get Tigers have to get to the World Series him. for him to play good. <laughs> so that's what you're saying. <laughs> or just just playoff race, and I think they're there next year. So oh, you know, you can keep the AAA, the you can keep the triple A the whole year till the till the Tigers playoff stretch. Tigers are not a playoff down. team. Stop. You, might as well, you have a better shot at making Stop. a playoff. Huh? There's no team from that division getting in a wild card. There's no chance. Do you guys Almost remember how at the beginning of last season we were talking about our sleeper wild card picks? And I said, hey, Diamondback, sleeper wild card. And you guys were like, oh, push ha, you Bostonian, you fool, yeah. you ungulate, you Neanderthal. You're Look one you You're one pick to our, like, a million, Ali. Nice. <laughs> like, like... <laughs> Me and Isaac's numbers against his. We you don't, don't want to have do that, that conversation, right pal. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I. What picks have you had? Now. What picks have you had, Mister Yankees? You know, in fourth place? you know baseball well. You had the Sit Red down. Sox Sit first, like every it's okay. like, it's okay. like. But that's sorry. There's so many to choose from. I'm sorry. There really aren't that many to choose from. There are. There are. The Blue Jays are playoff team. Was pretty hot. Yes, because they're good and they remain good. The Blue Jays are better than the Yankees. That was my take. You maintain the Yankees are better than the Jays. I'm just saying, you okay, maintain a better not be a take years, the Yankees year. would do better than the Jays. And when, I always maintain the Blue Jays would be better, and I've been we right. We learned psychology, you know, American <laughs> education teaches psychology. When when someone starts speaking louder, someone speaks starting faster, <laughs> that means, you know, they're getting a little nervous. And it's okay. You're wrong. Sometimes you're right. <laughs> you were right about the Diamondbacks, which I give credit for. I just have to compete and with you loud-ass Jersey kids, man. Yeah. New kids in Jersey are, are raised the megaphone. I mean, that's, I mean like. honestly, yeah, honestly, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> um, I wasn't gonna say. Oh, you know what? You know what I want to talk about? Um, Royce Lewis. I want to say sneaky, like actual MVP. I love how we're on the AL Central. Actually, sorry, we gotta get out of this. But one more. What do you guys think of? No, no, no. We can't. We we don't have. You know, to. So we should tell this episode. Yamamoto update. Where is he going? Plus AL Central. <laughs> like just <laughs> and just make it like a title of. No, oh, Royce. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. What were you saying? About I just, I just think he's a MVP? phenomenal talent. I think he's could be MVP. I really, I like obviously Judge Soto. Oh my god, that's so nice to say. Oh my god, I just, I just like, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I did, I did give this podcast to, to some of my work pals, but I a little bit of a nut there when I just said Judge Soto. Um, half, half nut, nut half for, nut. professionally, professionally, half nut. Um, <laughs> professional, yeah, nut. professional nut, <laughs> but. <laughs> um, now I lost my train of thought. But no, but other than that, like, who do you really have in the... Like, I don't really... Like, young AL talent. Oh, early for this. 
I don't know, man. I like Royce Lewis, baby. I, I, I just like his swing. I like, I like his feel. If he can stay healthy, he kind of like he. I was gonna say, kind of reminds me of like a Buxton type, even though it's on the same team. I know it's kind of weird to say, but like, just like so much power from like not a huge guy, and like I don't know, his swings are so violent. I, I don't know. I really like him. I really like Royce Lewis. If I gave you fifty bucks right now to tell you to put that money on an MVP candidate. And it, the two choices were Bobby Witt Jr. or Royce Lewis. Who would you put it on? Ooh, it has to be the one. Ooh, I like that. That's a good question. Ollie, I need I need to hear your take. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be either of those guys. No, no, no. This is this is a question for Isaac, okay. not uh, not okay. Ollie, not Ollie. I mean, honestly, uh, I really like Bobby range. Witt too, but I, I don't know. I think Bobby Witt's really coming into himself. But I like Royce Lewis, man. I Royce Lewis is is special talent, and so so is Bobby Witt. It's really it's really toss up, but just because Royce is my guy. Um, watching him in that playoff run, he's really uh-huh. something. So, Ali, all I'm saying is the next AL MVP is not going to be from either of those teams. It's going to be from the Orioles. What's well, a hypothetical? And Ali. that's what I put my money on. It's a hypothetical between. Well, hypothetical. Two options. <laughs> the hypothetical. I would put it on Witt. Sorry, Isaac, but okay. Witt has more time in the no, game. No, I agree. Yeah. And he steals bases. Yeah, no, yeah. And Witt is a Witt's runner. I think uh, Royce has more. But power. yeah, Gunner's winning the MVP. We all know that. You think so? Uh, Royce has more power, but. Um, like thirty thirty versus forty ten. I take thirty thirty myself. Forty ten. Oh oh oh. Okay. And Royce Royce does strike out a lot too. Royce struck uh, out like more than once a game last season. Well, you never know. You guys are sleeping on Ma- Matt Walner. <laughs> My Matt guy. Walner. Ollie doesn't know who that is. You know who sleeping on? You know who you're sleeping on? Nolan Shanuel. No, he does. Nolan Shanuel. No, 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 you guys stop, Nolan stop, stop. What? I am selling all Nolan Shanuel stocks I currently own. Dude, he Nolan Shanuel is a beast. <laughs> negative war next year. He's so Nolan out. Nolan Shanuel. He's, so out. he's 22. He's, he's got a great face. <laughs> hey, that's your first comment about him. Style. There's a problem. <laughs> great face. He's 22 and he's got a great face. Let's he's from go. Boca Raton. That's a city pointer. You know who's 22 and right has a great face? Juan Soto. But he's not 22 and he can't. Eh. Uh, we, whoa, cute, whoa. Cute, you cute. are 22 and you have a great face, thank you. Isaac. You I'm guys are both 22 with great faces. Thank you. Hey, let's cute go. It's Isaac's way of escaping. It's not great. <laughs> Jesus. It's not a great start. Um, hey, Isaac. Yeah. Kokoi. That doesn't. Is that not right? I th- I no, it's not right. You got to go back to your teacher. What would it, what would it be are better to say? Teacher? Or like like like. I don't uh, know what your first wa... part of that phrase. Anato wa kokoi. Anato Yeah, like something like that. Anato wa kokoi. Is that better? Kakoi. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that better? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have... Um... No, I can't. I can't. I'm done with the L Central. If you guys want to talk about someone else. Would you have else, Carlos Correa or something? <laughs> I could go on about this AL Central. Okay, well, I don't want to. But I'm not going to right now. I think we've gone on for... Why don't we talk? Why don't we talk just a little bit, just for fun, because we all like these teams. Well, I don't we like these teams, but we like talking about them. Why don't we talk about the NL East for a bit? The picture of the NL East. What are we thinking, guys? What are we thinking? Um, uh, coming out of left field. Okay, Braves, Juggernaut, number one team, probably AL East, oh, NL East champs again, and then. Phillies, who don't give a fuck about the regular season, who turn it on in late late August, somehow make the playoffs and make a run. Mets, they're probably not a great team next year, given given what they're doing this offseason. They're probably not getting Yamamoto. Their rotation's abysmal. Um, I don't know what their direction is. They f- publicly said they're aiming for 2025, so I'm not really counting too high on the Mets. The Marlins are an interesting team. Um, they actually won the same amount of games as the Diamondbacks last year. Uh, lost out on the tie so they're an interesting team pitching. who has a lot of young talent, young pitching, 84 wins, um, and then who am I forgetting? Nationals. Oh, the Nationals, obviously. They're a team to forget, so I don't know. It's an interesting top-heavy, top-heavy. Top, very top-heavy division. Race. Very top-heavy division. Three yeah, teams. Mets, um, I have a lot of Mets fans, and it, you know, it's just sad because I got a conversation about, like, oh, yeah, I know we're talking about Yamamoto. I was like, oh, yeah, I really want Yamamoto. Like, what do you want Yamamoto for? Like Yamamoto, even if you guys got Yamamoto, that doesn't help. Like, doesn't that doesn't make you like a better team? Almost, it almost doesn't even make you a better team because you guys are so abysmal in so many other ways. 
And I know I'm gonna I might get a lot of hate for this Mets take, but I just like the the Mets. I don't know. The Mets fans were just so cocky over the last couple of years with Steve Cohen tax, all that bullshit. So it's honestly like kind of refreshing that they're gonna be bad for a couple of years. I'm sorry. And 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 that division is too competitive right now for them. I really think it is. Um, I like the Marlins. Yankees kind of just told them to take a seat. Yeah, for a yeah. I mean, he did have dinner. Yamamoto like literally just got free dinner out of Steve Cohen. So like. <laughs> What he sees him as a blank yeah, checkbook. I mean, he is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Marlins are an exciting team to watch. But like you said, I mean, it's the Braves. It's the Braves um, uh, every time in that division. I just think, I think the Phillies yeah. are what the Yankees wish they were, which is like we don't care regular season. We're going to turn it on the postseason. They have that on switch that the Yankees claim they had for the last like five years. Um, but the, I, I, I like honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Phillies fan. I am a fan of the Phillies. That's what I'll say. Yeah, do the okay, Phillies, okay. Oh. is there ever a year going to come when they can unseat the Braves at the top of that division? Or does the status quo antebellum hold? They win the wild card every year and then beat the well, Braves. Well, this is the, the year they... It's remarkable they, how often... They have to do it because Zach Wheeler, I don't know if they're going to be able to re-sign Zach Wheeler, so like this is the year to do it if there's going to be a year. So does that mean you make one more signing? Do you pony up the money for Reese Hoskins and bring him back? He'll be crazy expensive, but do you do it? I don't know about crazy expensive. That's a guy who averaged like almost 40 homers a year per 162 games for a while. But coming off I mean, of that injury, time, though, but his power is legit. Coming off that injury, you don't, you don't know what you're getting. There's not that much in the first base market or on the DH market. Where's he going to play? DH? He'll DH? He'll play around. They, they just want to get that bat too in many, like, They have like five DHs on that team. What do the Phillies need yeah, but you can... to get over the top then? like What do the, what do the Phillies need? I really like their team. Arguably, arguably, Yamamoto. I think they need another pitcher. They need a Yamamoto. They Yamamoto. need a Montgomery. But they need another guy who can just. You deal. know, I feel like Montgomery. One more guy who can deal. Montgomery on the Phillies would makes be sense a good to fit. me. Yeah, yeah, it does it, make a lot of sense. They haven't had a good lefty in years. And they have those two like like a good solid lefty since. I'm Hamels. not. Gonna, I'm not going to call um, Ranger Suarez your boy. Not like uh, yeah, okay. They've had Ranger Suarez, but not like a stud <laughs> front of the rotation Quickly. guy. Yeah, I, I mean that rotation would be would be filth. They have a lot of those power righties. I mean, Aaron Noah's is not exactly a power righty, but he's like a sinker ball, sinker ball righty. Um, I think I think uh, um, Monty would be a really great like different look in that rotation. Um, it would be, and they'll get some Andrew Painter next season if he ever comes back from injury. So there's some oh, work. That will be fun. Can it I just say fun. something yes. that's gone under the radar here in the NL East and is pretty funny to me that how fucking bored the Braves are that they're literally just taking on bad contracts and seeing if they can find a trade partner for them and if they don't they're just cutting him like I don't know I don't know if a team has been this like like fuck you everyone like we are we have a team set and we are just trying to make improvements on the edges and see what we can do like they have the money they have everything they have they can do at their fingertips like Max Stassi they trade him trade him away Marco Gonzalez they get him they trade him away they try to do it with Matt Carpenter and then uh they just cut him because they literally openly said we couldn't find a trade partner for him Uh, they're just bored they're trying to do what they like they don't have moves to make but they just want to be well when you're the best team of when we're in the best team in the MLB you have that luxury you know Jared Kelnick, like they're just taking chances. Like they might be the new Dodgers. They are. I mean, in terms of, in terms of dominance and just like power, power balance in the in the division. So here's a here's a question. If you guys, let's say Yamamoto does sign with the Yankees, in that situation, I assume you take the Yankees rotation over the Braves rotation, right? Fair. Mostly, yeah. mostly you take that. Okay. Hundred percent. Yes. Let's say Yamamoto does not sign with the Yankees, and let's say the Braves, they probably are not going to do this, but let's say the Braves signed someone like Monty. They probably wouldn't, but let's say they signed someone like Monty to be like a number three. Then whose rotation do you take? The Yankees don't sign Yamamoto. Well, Frankie Montas, got to throw his name in there. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm no, not, but, no, but, no, but seriously, I mean, seriously, I got to say, because... Carlos Rodon is, is a. Is, is the number one in most teams. And he had a crappy, terrible year. His ceiling is so high. He ca- His ceiling is so high for next year. So if you have that, Garrett Cole and Nestor, who, I mean, Nestor's a little like you don't know what you're getting, but, I mean, he's been a, he's been pretty solid uh, other than injury. 
I, I and, and Frankie Montas, who again, when healthy, has been a pretty decent, you know, above average pitcher. Have him as your fourth. I mean, that that's that's a pretty good rotation. Like you, you don't really you know waggle your finger at that. Like. It's true, and the Braves and the Braves have more holes than you might think because of how old Morton I mean, is, and because yeah, Morton, you know, I, I think he, he's gonna, you he could snap an AC, a UCL at any point with all those curveballs he throws. And Max Freed, I like Max Freed, but you know, he's coming off of you know half a season of being injured too. It, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. It's it's a good question. I think I pretty pretty confidently take the Yankees over that rotation. Really, the and the Braves. Wow, the Braves what a take! So as loyal. Much as, no, no, like, come on, like, one by one, Strider and Cole. Cole washes Strider out the water. And then you got a bunch of question marks that, for both sides, you can have doubts about each guy. Like, Nestor Cortez, injury prone, had one great year. Could say that about, I don't know, a young, uh, what's his name, A.J. Smith-Schuster? I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, remember his name. you could say the same thing. Someone like that, or Clark Schmidt, like, you can compare those two. Charlie Morton, injury prone, really good stuff. Maybe maybe a Carlos Rodon. Like Rodon probably has the edge there. And Bryce so, Elder. Bryce Elder feels very fluky to me. Bryce Elder. Feels very fluky Bryce Elder feels like such a Clark Schmidt. Like, like such it, a Clark these guys Schmidt. are very comparable, and I would take the edge on the Yankee side. So for what Monty, it's worth, Monty would you know, be a nice add. The last season, wins above average for the Yankees rotation was two point zero, and wins above average for the Braves rotation was one point nine. I mean, can you expect that with a twenty five difference in, in wins, twenty five game difference in wins? That was the difference in the rotation, literally, and that makes a lot of sense I, to me. I actually, that surprised if you, me. That it's not. It's not that surprising. The problem but that's was why the, the pitching. That's why the question is good because they're not going to face each other that much, but the teams are are comparable in that way. Because now that the Yankees have Soto, that's moving them in the direction of what a Braves team looks like, even though not like at the Braves level right now. But the pitching is like static, so someone has to make a move. Yeah, and for the Yankees to be even compared to the Braves, their their pitching would have to severely outweigh their the Braves pitching because the Braves offense is so much better than the Yankees offense. I know, but the Yankees the, the Yankees, Yankees Soto. for what it's worth did have the best bullpen in the game last season. So that's still there. Their pitching wasn't the problem. Yeah. Yeah, no, it wasn't the problem. It wasn't the problem. And that's consistent. So the I mean look, we're going to have to talk about the AL East at some point. It's probably too early for that in this episode. Too late. Too late yeah, in this episode. I would or too late. <laughs> too, I mean, too early in this. Too early in the off season. Too late in this episode. We'll save it for another time. I mean, but... I kind of want to talk more in depth about NL Central. But okay, we could do. Well, we could do that. We can do that. Oh yeah, let's do a little NL Central. Isaac, I mean, think? briefly. I'll listen to your take and <laughs> see what I have to say. Actually, no. NL. A we whole division is going to yeah. take too long. We haven't so seen a lot of moves w- get made. Yeah. Let's just talk about something probably the people want to hear more about the Dodgers rotation. Um, oh yeah, sure. There are a bunch of question marks. They just got Tyler Glass now. We didn't really talk about oh that God, move, yeah. but I th- in my opinion, that's a pretty pretty big move, and he signed for a big big money extension. Uh, I think they're still they're going to get Kershaw. They're heavily in on Yamamoto. They're going to get Kershaw, and I think they're still in on one of the big trade candidates, even with the Glass now move, like a Burns or a Bieber or I don't know. They have something up their sleeve, and they the way they're playing this offseason, they're going all fucking out. They got embarrassed by the Diamondbacks last year. And I don't know. But, What's but, up with but this rotation? Are they? Yes, yes, yes. But they're going to, their Dodgers are going to go all out every year. But do you think they're not also thinking 2025 when they have Shohei back as a pitcher? Is that in the map? I think they're, no, 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 no. I mean, all these moves that the Glasnow move, that's obvious they're, they're going for it. They're going for this year. I mean, they go for it every year, but. Um, I, I still think there's, an, I still think there's another move coming as well. I think the Glasnow trade, just because we didn't talk about it as much, um, what a what a deal for for him. I mean, he gets to basically like choose whether where what the team he goes to because it's based on like if he wants to sign an extension or not. Like, I mean, what a deal he gets to go back to his like home state and pitch. Um, it's just the thing about him is that he he's he's as dominant as anyone in the MLB when he's when he's not injured, but he. Definitely, I think it was two Tommy Johns under his belt. Like that's a huge risk. Like one more and he's done. Um, so I don't know. Like hit that mixed with Walker Bueller also coming off injury, and you know uh, um, what's the young guy's name? Uh, Bobby Miller. Like it, it, there's there's a lot of question marks still, but like the the potential, the ceiling of this rotation is so high. Like this, we could we could be high. talking about in high. like June. Like this is the best rotation in baseball. Like easily. Or we could be saying like, oh, like it used to be, or yeah, or one of them gets injured. Now we're like, now we're screwed. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so it, it, it's very, very variable. 
um, this Dodgers rotation. To be fair, their their back end their back end depth in the organization right now is, I would say, weaker than it's been in a while. And that sounds crazy talking about keep the Dodgers. Trading everyone. To say they've ever had, yeah. To, well, to say they they've that of all teams they've ever had problems with pitching depth is ridiculous. But like realistically, if they don't make any more moves, they could have Ryan Yarbrough starting out the year in the rotation, which is not acceptable for LA. Or like Emmett Sheehan. Like these guys are respectfully clowns. Whoa, whoa, it's amazing. whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Ryan Yarbrough is a clown. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's fun, but he's a clown. And realistically, that's like shocking for the Dodgers team that two years ago had historically the best rotation of the, the best pitching staff of the century in 2022. To two years from that, to be in a position where you'd have Ryan Yarbrough starting the fifth game of the season is like is like shocking. So that's why it won't be Ryan. But it won't be Yarbrough because they're going to get somebody else. So it's just a matter of time to who they get when it happens. Probably not a Burns or Bieber, but definitely um, Woodruff. Like he's a free agent. Woodruff, now, yeah, right? Woodruff could be in there. Um, could be Woodruff. I just could hope be... it's not Yamamoto. Yeah. <laughs> I just like. Uh, no, no, I think I think nobody I th- wants that. But can yeah, I just I think mention Yamamoto's a Yankee? I'm Yankee. sorry. Totally unrelated. I'm sorry. I just want to. And on this note, that Ryan Pepio is going to be absolutely fucking filthy for the Rays <laughs> for whatever years they has on his contract because, bro, with point seven six fit uh, uh, whip for a guy at twenty six years old, two point one ERA. Are you kidding me, bro? Like this, I could already see Stanton flailing at his sliders in the dirt. He gives up a ton of home runs. You, I'm sure our audience is overjoyed that we spent 30 minutes talking about the AL Central today because that's what you guys are here for is talk about Nolan Chenuel and the uh, and the Kansas City Royals. But that being said, there's big news coming. We don't know what that news is. Oh, we be. do. The uh, <laughs> what Red Sox? The wheels Yo, are turning. Up. The car is rolling down the hill. When it gets to the bottom, we'll see what shape it's in. We'll see what shape our teams are in. I have a lot of hope for my boys. You have a lot of hope for your boys. You have a lot of hope Monty, for your boys. So... Oh, for Monty. Okay, okay, okay. For Monty. Go, Craig <laughs> Breslow. Breslow, let's go. Dude, you guys can also, get James Paxton. by the way, guys. I heard he's good. By the way. Kluber's dude, a free agent. Yeah. Kluber is a free Paxton, agent. Paxton, Kluber, 3-4. Right. Let's go. Chester's. More like 2-3. Anyway, everybody, I hope <laughs> if you're still here after an hour and a half, we really, really appreciate you. If you want to hit that like and subscribe button, please feel free. It would do a lot for us. We love making content for you guys. And we're going to be back uh, more often than we are before. We're going to be back better than ever next season and in the off season and in the preseason. All, All our seasons. usual content's coming out. We appreciate you every season. All right.